the interpreter of your spirit. So that if your spirit feels a certain way, yeah. Yeah. it's the mind that it will reveal it right. to the world. Right. Nobody can know the mind of God except the spirit of God. Yeah. But if you're a child of God, right. The Spirit of God is born in you. So that, so that if God's Spirit got it, God says, you have my Spirit. So if we have God's Spirit, we're going to have God's mind. That same mind being you, that's also in Christ. If, if I have his spirit, I have his thoughts. If I have his spirit, I have his wisdom, knowledge, reason. I got his spirit, I got everything he has. What is normal? Normal for a Christian should be Christ-like. Normal for a Christian should be the mind of God. Normal for a Christian should be to think God thoughts. Mm -hmm. you know, I have a yeah. So then normal for a Christian ought to be peace. Yeah, yeah. I've got to be calm enough, quiet enough, mm -hmm. so that I can hear what God is saying to me. Yeah. If I get caught up in the world's thinking, uh, I'm going to hear what God is trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. I just passed by my first point. Spirit talk. Spirit spoken. That, that the Spirit of God speaks. That's not the question. The question is not whether God speaks. The question is, do you hear God? Yeah, yeah, when yeah. He speaks? Yeah. No doubt in my mind, God talks to you. But but are you listening? Now some people get caught up in this notion that that God doesn't talk anymore. He stopped talking to people. Uh, that's especially when people start talking about the apostles and Bishops and stuff. Because you see, a lot of times people claim God gave them a special title. Uh, you know, that's kind of questionable. Because you know, I can't see God talking to me just to tell me I got a, a bigger title, bigger than you. Hmm. But I can't say God doesn't speak today. Because Mary told me that God called him to preach. How can God call you to preach if you just stop talking? <laughs> wow. I wish I had a witness here. If he's talking to me enough to tell me that he wants me to preach his gospel, that's an indication at least that God is talking. Uh -huh. No, no. Most preachers who've been called to preach spend a lot of time running. Mm -hmm. I wish I had a good time. I don't, I really don't have too much confidence in the fellow say God called him and he jumped right to it. Because if you understand the importance of ministry, preaching ministry, you ain't too much in a hurry to get there. Especially with the pay. <laughs> but, but, but there are instances where God gives instructions and people don't hear what God is trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I believe it. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, yeah. Paul tells us that 
Only the spirit of man is, and his, knows his thoughts. His spirit teaches his mind. God calls us to ministry, therefore he's still talking. No one knows the mind of the Lord except the spirit of the Lord. We have the spirit of God. All of God's wisdom and knowledge is at our disposal through his spirit. In other words, if I have the mind of God, the spirit of God, uh, I have the mind of God, I've got everything I need. Do I have the witness here? That's point number one and point number two. Point number two, spiritually sensitive. Well, if, if a calm mind, a mind at peace, is normal for the Christian, then an abnormal mind is one that is too busy, filled with reasoning, worry, anxiety, fear. Normal mind, minds of a Christian, uh, Christians is a mind that is at rest. I know it's not, it's a mind that's blank. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I wish I had a witness here. I mean, I ain't, I ain't saying you got to be stupid, but, but it's a mind at rest. I'm not, I, I don't have a blank mind. I don't have a, a absent mind. But, but, but I don't allow the worries of the world yeah, yeah, yeah. to flood my mind so that I can't hear when God is talking to me. See, one of the problems, especially, see, see you, you, you can look at people, well, people on their computer, people on their phone. Well, you know, you can be all obsessed with the fact that you are so intellectually wise and reasoning and you trying to uh, investigate all your options that, that you can flood your mind with a lot of stuff that can distract you from the main thing in your life. Yeah, yeah. And I think I want to tell you anything. Anything or anybody yeah. that, that hinders you from hearing what God wants to say yeah. is sinful. Yeah. I'm going to repeat that. You ain't got to say it, man. I don't give a fit right yeah. Anything, anybody, I don't care what it is. If it stops me, if it hinders me from hearing what God has to say, yeah, yeah. it's sinful, it's wrong. Right. See, sometimes we get our mind cluttered with a lot of stuff, and we think we are so special because we our mind filled with intellectual prop. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We think we're all that in the bag of chip. Well, I don't care what it is dominating your mind. If your mind is so flooded with other stuff, yeah. you don't have time to listen to God. You and Trump, y'all call it quiet time. Was it? Quiet time is more than what you think. I've got to make sure that my mind is restful enough to I am to the point where I'm sensitive of what God is trying to say to me. Yeah, yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, yeah. Paul said, the natural man, the natural man, receiving not the things of the Spirit, but neither can he know that this foolishness to him yeah. can go out because they are only spiritually discerned. You can't get it out of a book. You know, you, you can even read the Bible, read the words, without reading the word. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. I, I've got to, if I'm going to get it, I'm not going to get it uh, through some natural means. I'm not going to get it because I have a PhD. I'm not going to get it because I've gone to school or seminary. The only way I can get it is I have to be spiritually discerning. All right. Spiritually tuned in, spiritually sensitive to what God is trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, yeah. That blank look, man. Yeah, that blank look. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, anything, anything that clogs up my mind, so that I can't discern God and God's guidance. Deep in the wrong direction. Spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned. Yeah. You get a whole lot of amen. I'm through now, man. It don't matter. Yeah. You don't get no more. That's all y'all get. Lord is pleading for you. You don't get no more. 
if nothing else, we got you need to make make sure you tuned in. Yeah. 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 Tuned in. God is trying to talk to you. You born again? When you born, you born with the Spirit of God. Amen. If I got the Spirit of God, I would have the mind of God. Right. If I got the Spirit of God, God's Spirit ought to be talking to me. The question is not whether God is talking to you. The question is, are you listening? listening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me then close this thing out. Man. We didn't have a heart attack today. <laughs> that, that, that. I got to stay on the same. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got to have my mind stayed on the same. Turn with me, somebody, to Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26.
crying like a little wimp, talking about take me, yeah. take my life. But he allowed Jezebel to make him out of a wimp. God didn't even address that mess. God, first of all, feeds him so he would get from under that tree. Uh, told him to go, and when he when he was in the mountain place, uh -huh. and while he was in that place, God asked him, what are you doing here? Mm. Elijah, yes, uh, I'm the only one who have not bowed to Baal. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. It's going to be in the Lord. I'll take that. I'll take that. Elijah, yes, uh, he's there. And the Bible says uh, God uh, start moving. Uh, first of all, he moved uh, by shaking the mountain. Yeah. 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 He said, I'm going to show you something. And he goes out to sea and the mountain starts shaking uh, until pieces of the mountain start to fall. Uh, but the Bible said God uh, wasn't in the mountain. Wasn't in the shaking. Then he said uh, that was an earthquake. And that mountain started quaking uh, and shaking uh, yeah, until it uh, got his attention. Uh, but uh, the Bible said God uh, wasn't in the earthquake. Yes, uh, he said that was uh, a ball of fire. Uh, but uh, God uh, wasn't in the fire. Yeah, he talked about all of these, uh, yes, natural uh, occurrences and storms and distractions. Uh, but the final analysis is uh, that God wasn't uh, in any of that. But when he got through, he says, uh, there came a still, uh, small voice. Oh, I was with you here. And the Bible declared that. Uh, the still small voice uh, was the voice of the Lord. The still small voice uh, was the voice he was trying to get to uh, in the first place. Now, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, we went through quite a storm last week. Uh, and sometimes uh, when there's a whole lot of thunder and lightning, uh, yeah, yes, yeah. and earthquakes and tornadoes and hurricanes, uh, y'all ready to listen to the Lord? Uh, uh, little baby, uh, it would be thundering and lightning. Uh, the old people say, y'all sit down and be quiet. Uh, God is talking. Uh, Wish I had a witness here. Uh, yeah, there's uh, something about a person, uh, I won't say a Negro, but I didn't want to say that in church. Yeah, uh, that when uh, a whole lot of noise comes, uh, they want to listen to God talking. Uh, they get scared with a whole lot of noise. Uh, but Paul, uh, yes, Elijah would have me share with you uh, that God mostly speak uh, in a still, uh, small voice. God, uh, he loves to lean over uh, and whisper in your ear uh, the words uh, that he has to say. Uh, don't uh, let all the noise on the outside uh, stop you hearing uh, what the Lord wants you to say. Uh, don't let uh, a whole lot of disruption and confusion uh, yes, uh, allow uh, that to distract you uh, from what God has to say. Uh, they told me, Brother Clint, uh, that their hero dump, uh, he got uh, convicted last week uh, 34 times. Uh, he was found guilty. Yes, uh, he comes down and say uh, it was a fake trial. Uh, it's amazing uh, that every time he loses, uh, he says it's a fake. Uh, it's amazing to me uh, how we got folk who hear what they want to hear uh, yeah. and see uh, what they want to see. Uh, yeah. Because that's the kind of world uh, we're living in. Uh, but I came by to tell you, uh, see it's in. Uh, it's not the voice of God. Uh, 
God still speaks up and he speaks in a still small voice. Yeah, yeah, God yeah. still talks, but you got to make sure you're tuned in yeah, to what right. he's got to say. Republicans claim they are spiritually sensitive, but they don't sound like what I hear from the Lord. They claim they are pro-life, but seem like when programs come out trying to feed the hungry, they don't want to have anything to do with it. That's contrary to the voice I hear from the Lord. They claim that God is really the one forming their agenda, but it appears to me their agenda is contrary to the voice of God. Seem like to me they're raising the interest rate because they claim that it won't be to have to face inflation. But the only thing that's inflated is the interest rate they raise, causing the prices to go up, making the food higher in the grocery store. Seem like the only one getting a discount are the rich people and poor people are having a hard way to go. But I got some good news. While the devil thinks he's in control, hold on to God's unchanging hand. God still speaks in his still small voice. Can't you hear him? I feel sorry for myself because I'm the only one who have not vowed, haven't vowed to bail. Everybody else is going the wrong way. Yes, he's going to tell you the truth. He's going to tell you what the said the Lord. He said, well, you think you the only one. I think I ought to tell you, I've got 7,000 who are faithful and haven't bowed to bail. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and go and do what I told you to do. Go crown the king of Syria. Go crown the king of Israel. Go ahead and put Elijah in your place and just do what I told you to do. I still have all of it in control. I'm closing now, but I think I ought to tell you that I'm glad. The Lord is still in charge, and He'll keep our minds in perfect peace. The Lord, He's still in charge, and He'll help us be what He's called us to be. But you got to do like Isaiah. You got to depend on Him to keep you. I used to sing a song, "Oh, to be kept by Jesus." To be kept by the power of the mind. Is there anybody here that's ever been kept by the Lord? Let me talk about my favorite song. One of my favorites. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. If you read his word, if you talk to him regularly, he'll keep your mind stayed on Jesus. When the storm is raging and the wind is blowing, he'll keep your mind stayed on him. Is there anybody here who knows that even though your electricity may go out, you still got some power? If your mind is stayed on him, I'm so glad he's able to keep. As long as I'm thinking God's thoughts, I have the wisdom I need. As long as I'm thinking God's thoughts, I have the knowledge I need. As long as I'm thinking God's thoughts, He'll guide my feet. He'll hold my hand. As long as I'm thinking God's thoughts, He'll be a light in my darkness. Away. 
And I was there in the middle of the night, I fell asleep. So I fell asleep too early to be sleeping at 3 o'clock. The devil is busy. No electricity. Can't turn on the television. I said, I know what I'll do. I picked up my phone. I dialed my Bible. And I turned on my Bible. And let the Lord talk to me. And do you know that if he talks to you in the darkness, you can put your soul on Hollywood fire. He can talk to you in the dark and bring light to a dark place. He can talk to you in the dark and bring joy in sorrow. He can talk to you in the dark and bring peace in the midst of tribulation. Is there anybody here? No, he's all right. Is there anybody here? No, that he's worthy. He's worthy. I said he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. I'm so glad he keeps me. I'm so glad that he walks with me. I'm glad he talks with me and tells me. He's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's my all in all and my everything. And he's worthy. I said he's worthy. Can you imagine how powerful it will be to look up and see a church full of men worshiping and praising God? The impact on our congregation, the impact on our community, as well as our young people. Help show the world that men worship too. Join us on Sunday, June 23rd at 10 a.m. for our annual Men's Day at Bethany.